Hello, brothers and sisters, and welcome to this week's module. In 2011, Elder Bednar held a landmark meeting with seminaries and institute. He asked the thousands in attendance to share personal questions that he would answer. For an hour and 15 minutes, he answered questions as they were remotely texted in or personally shared by those in the live audience. Those who participated witnessed a miracle. Though he only addressed a few questions, thousands were answered, including mine. Every time I speak with somebody who participated in that meeting remembers the miracle as their question was answered as well. It was like Jesus feeding the 5,000 with a few loaves and fishes. How was this miracle performed? In his introductory remarks, Elder Bednar prefaced the miracle with this observation. Teaching is not talking and telling. Teaching is observing and listening so that we can discern and then know what to say. I, I commend the courage of Brother Webb today when he talked about teaching an institute class and a student posed a question or made a comment and he was rather preoccupied with his lesson plan. Now, I'm not picking on Brother Webb because he introduced the example. He was more concerned about talking and telling than he was about observing and listening so he could then discern and know what to say. May I suggest that if we go into a classroom pretty well confident we know what to say, you're totally unprepared. Now, that doesn't mean you just walk in and you're clueless, but you have to jump out of the boat. Now, let me explain what I mean by jumping out of the boat. I don't think personally Peter knew he could walk on the water sitting in the boat. It wasn't until the Savior beckoned him he had his gaze fixed on the Savior, and then he went to the Savior. And I suspect he may have even been a little surprised to find himself walking on the water. But he didn't know it sitting in the boat. So for you and for me as religious educators, you and I have to jump out of the boat. And you and I have to fix our gaze on the Savior. And as we go, and yes, we have prepared, and yes, we have treasured up, but in the moment, it will be given us that very portion that is needful. That can be a little scary. And if you're not willing to jump out of the boat, then there cannot come an increased portion of the Holy Ghost, not to help you, but to bless the students so they may learn for themselves. Joseph's mother, I don't think, thought she was in a teaching role. But when she posed a question and Joseph said, all is well, I'm well enough off, I have learned for myself. She facilitated learning in Joseph that never could have been accomplished by her sitting down and giving him a lecture or even having some ongoing conversation. She invited Joseph to act as he acted and responded, then by the power of the Holy Ghost, he learned things for himself. That is a powerful pattern. Now, what we're going to do here today, you may think, is totally bizarre. But I've served in the Quorum of the Twelve for almost seven years now, so you've come to expect that from me. <laughs> what I'd like to do is not give some traditional message. As as much value as that might have, I would really rather engage in that pattern. It's not a matter of participation. It's a matter of collectively inviting the power of the Holy Ghost so that each of us can learn for ourselves. Eight years later, in our most recent general conference, Elder Bednar used the same example to re-emphasize this principle. So how does it feel to teach this way? There is a genre of acting called improvisational theater. Improv comedy is its most popular platform. And watching good improv is amazing. You can't believe what people are coming up with on the spot. But a closer look shows that they are even better trained than they are talented. 
There is an element of improvisation when teaching by the Spirit. Improvisation does not mean making something up. The word improvisation means to compose or to say extemporaneously. In other words, to say something in accordance with the needs of the moment. The Savior's teachings were always in accordance with the needs of the moment. In contrast, the disciples were always trying to follow the script. Too many people, not enough food, solution, send them away. The Savior improvised. Bring me what you have. Let me bless, break, and then there will be leftovers. There is a mindset required by improvisational actors. They practice a principle called yes and. You always accept what the others say. You accept it with a yes, then build upon it with an and. Most of our teaching follows the pattern of yes, but, because the comment offered doesn't fit our lesson plan or the direction we're intending to go. Eight years ago, Elder Bednar accepted every question he could. He embraced it like it was the most important question on the earth and built upon it with the solemn responsibility to make us feel important. The Spirit was present, and even though he never read my question, I felt my answer come clear as day as I sat in a cultural hall thousands of miles away in Southern California. When Peter jumped out of the boat, he improvised. It is not necessary to cover every verse of the lesson or the scripture block. It is necessary to meet the needs of your student in the very moment that you're with them. There is a saying in improv, the power of improv comes from the power of two, not the wit and wisdom of one. You can't be funny alone. You need someone to share the moment with. Sounds a lot like Elder Bednar. Teaching is not talking and telling of one, but the observing, listening, and discerning with others. Yes, and. Build up your students, their comments, and show them that you're not preoccupied by the lesson, but purely occupied by their momentary needs. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. He made you strong.